Hello, I'm Darren McGee, and today's question asks if I would look at self-destructive borderline personality disorder. Now, if you like this video, if you find it helpful, please click like and please consider subscribing to my channel for future updates on mental health related topics. But just as a reminder, this video is not a substitute for support from a mental health professional, nor is it a tool to be used to diagnose someone. Now, borderline personality disorder is part of the cluster B personality group, which is often characterized by erratic and unpredictable behavior. People with borderline personality tend to be very sensitive and experience, experience fluctuations in their moods and their behavior. The smallest thing can bring about an intense emotional reaction, which can be problematic not just to themselves, but to the people around them as well. But like all personality disorders, it's not a one-size-fits-all. It's more like a spectrum, I often think. It, there are many different colours, many different shades, many different characteristics within that diagnosis. And at the time of the making of this video, there are four recognised subtypes of borderline personality disorder. There is impulsive borderline, there is quiet borderline, petulant borderline, and the topic for today's video, self-destructive borderline. Now, typically, people with borderline personality disorder often feel a fluctuating sense of who they are, what they are, how they see themselves, how they see others, and indeed the world around them. Their goals, their beliefs, their aspirations, they may change so often that life can seem quite uncertain and sometimes very confusing. There is a difficulty in being able to regulate feelings, and as a result of this, relationships can often be quite unstable. What we see are overly dramatic behaviours, emotional outbursts. There is an intense fear of abandonment. There are mood swings, extreme anxiety and impulsiveness. Now, as I say, there is a difficulty with emotional regulation and difficulty with being able to self-soothe. So let's look at some of the more common characteristics of self-destructive borderline. So first of all, there can be low mood. There's depression. And things can sometimes feel like they're more effort than they really are. Someone with self-destructive borderline can become discouraged very quickly if something requires, say, hard work, continuous effort, or there are any obstacles that may arise. These things can put them off working towards goals, things like that, that are in their best interest. They can often feel a sense of defeat before they even try. And there can be feelings of bitterness, uh, resentment, maybe, maybe bitter towards others who have hurt them or bitter towards others who they perceive as being more accomplished than they are. There may be bitterness, resentment towards maybe a situation that they find themselves in or even past situations which are no longer present because often what we see is a lot of rumination over past hurts, past disappointments. And that resentment, that bitterness, is often turned inwards as well. People with self-destructive borderline often feel an intense kind of self-loathing which can have them sabotage their own well-being, their own happiness. They, there's a belief there that maybe they don't deserve any better. They don't deserve to be happy. And this could look like, say, they, uh, they have a job, they, but they're maybe not performing at work. They're, they're not doing their tasks. They're, they're not really focusing. They're not really putting their all into it. Um, they may be turning up late every day, taking days off, and they will continue doing this until either disciplined or until they're eventually dismissed. There can be sabotaging behaviours where they are pushing away those that care about them, those that they care about as well through maybe their low moods, their bad tempers, they may even cheat sometimes in relationships. Pretty much anything that is going to sabotage that situation or sabotage that relationship. And more often than not, what they're doing is actually creating a self-fulfilling prophecy. Again, that self-sabotaging behavior, things that are in their own best interest, they, they see a job but they don't apply for it and then beat themselves up about it afterwards. Or, or they do apply for it and don't really give a very good interview. They don't really put a lot of effort into it, but then beat themselves up about it afterwards. Then maybe they do get the job, but it's difficult because it requires focus, effort, responsibility. And so again, they, they perform in a way that is going to sabotage that, finding obstacles for pretty much everything they have to do. These behaviours a lot of the time, apart from the self-fulfilling prophecy, another way of looking at it is what they're trying to do is maybe confirm their own cognitive biases. And because there is often that unstable sense of self and an ability to regulate how they feel, 
On one hand, someone with self-destructive borderline can spend a lot of time looking for comfort from others, looking for validation, looking for reassurance, looking for it, say, through attention, whether that's good or bad attention. But because they believe no one really cares about them, any reassurance or validation they get is either rejected or it's, it's very short-lived. The belief being, again, no one cares about me. So it's okay for me not to care about me either. So when it comes to things like self-care, things like doing things in their best interest, hobbies, things that they might enjoy, projects they're going to benefit from, even if it's just relaxation, sometimes it can even mean just basic simple personal hygiene. These things are sometimes not seen as a priority, sometimes not even a necessity. There can also be substance misuse, addiction, Sometimes maybe a way of self-medicating. Other times it's risk, it's risk-taking, reckless behaviours. You know, gambling, um, unprotected sex with strangers. But these these behaviours are not necessarily about trying to fit in or or trying to impress others. Again, it is more that self-destructive nature. There can be forms of self-harm, physical self-harm. There can be suicidal behaviours, ideation. There can even be a history of suicide attempts. For others, this can sometimes look as if they're just being self-absorbed, they're wallowing in self-pity, or indeed they want attention with this kind of behaviour. But this is not the case. Remember that inner turmoil, that self-loathing is very real to them. Those that live with self-destructive borderline are often very easily insulted, very easily wounded, very easily disappointed. But again, that inability to regulate those feelings, those emotions, to be able to manage expectations, not just their own, their own but to manage other people's as well. Almost everything is processed and tends to come out as frustration, disappointment and depression. Now, treating self-destructive borderline can be difficult. Difficult in the sense, remember, they're reluctant to seek help. But having said that, difficult is not the same as impossible. And because someone isn't necessarily going to change overnight with the flick of a switch, the push of a button, does not mean that they cannot be helped, does not mean that they, they, they will not develop better ways of coping, better ways of seeing themselves. It may take a piece of time and it may take a lot of patience on, on the part of those people who are working with them. Developing healthy, positive relationships with others can help as much as, you know, reaching out to mental health professionals like counsellors, psychotherapists who can help heal past traumas, learn to regulate feelings, communicate with themselves and indeed others in a more effective way. Learning to make more positive life choices. These things may take time but they can happen with perseverance and with encouragement. So that's a brief outline of self-destructive borderline personality disorder. There's many things I may have missed. Please feel free to use the comment box below. I am interested in some of the conversations that have been starting around these videos. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to my channel for future updates on mental health related topics. And until next time, thanks for watching.